created to entertain, educate, and evolve the modern day deer hunter. I don't sound like that. <laughs> Who's that guy? <laughs> everybody's like, yes you do. No, that's, that's you, man. <laughs> The more and more you do it, the more you get used to it. Mm-hmm. And uh, I don't know. This is comfortable tonight because we've been sitting out in this garage. It's been hot for months, and these headphones keep you pretty warm. Yeah, I was kind of looking forward to these cooler, <laughs> cooler temperatures and being able to have these on our head, have a fucking fire going. Yeah. That'd well, awesome. that's about what yeah, we're we've had a couple. Have you really? Yeah, but tonight I didn't have the time to prepare such a thing in. It's pretty comfortable in here. Dude, it's nice in here. I figured oh, yeah, once is. we put these on, we'd be pretty good. But, yeah, man, we're coming right into hunting season. I mean, we're just a couple of weeks out. It's, what, 58 degrees in here I right know. now? It's a little cooler outside. Perfect. It's perfect. Everybody's getting excited. Yep. Everybody's got Oktoberfest. <laughs> yeah, we got a couple different brands of Oktoberfest sitting here in front of us. And we got a couple, we got a return guest and a... First time friend sitting here. Um, Not first time friend. First time. First time. Podcaster. First time <laughs> podcaster. <laughs> first time friend. Friends for a long time. <laughs> um, let's talk about the event coming up first and why. Uh, well, let's do a little introduction because <laughs> since the last time you were over, our audience has like quadrupled. Yeah. Which that awesome. was only about, I don't know, six weeks ago yeah, six weeks or, or two, so. mo- two probably two yeah, months two ago months. now when you were over here. But uh, why don't you just. Episode eight or something. Go yeah, ahead and bring yeah. bring any new listeners up to speed who d- don't possibly know who you are. Um, I'm Jason Meekoff. Um I'm the uh, state chair for the Backcountry Hunters and Anglers for Michigan. So, the sportsman's voice for our wild public lands, waters, and wildlife. Yeah. Um, so, that's what I do. And we got a big event, local event coming up. And I imagine you're busy. I am, you know, besides the fact that work has gone insane, um, we're planning for the uh, first annual Michigan um, BHA rendezvous. Mm-hmm. So, it's going to be a blast. Um it's going to be running the weekend of the 22nd, 23rd, and 24th of uh, September. So the first day is going to be pretty much just you show up around someplace between 3 and 7, hang out, register, talk to everybody, campfire, campfires will be going, stuff where, like that. Uh, where is it? Where uh, is the event? So it's at Buckley's Mountainside Canoes in uh, Mount Pleasant. One of the board members is the owner there. So we're basically, it's a three-day event or a one-day event, depending on what you want. So if you pay 40 bucks, you get the whole three days, and it, you get a rustic campsite on site. So you get to bring a tent, hang out there, hang out with a bunch of like-minded, badass hunters for uh three days straight and uh enjoy campfire debauchery it's good times oh man <laughs> that's cool <laughs> it's gonna be rough on the liver i think <laughs> going up there for three days yeah. what was the name of it again uh buckley's mountainside canoes and it's the uh michigan chapter of backcountry hunters and anglers it's our first annual rendezvous we've been uh in existence for 18 months um We've grown by over 600% as far as <laughs> members go in, a, in, wow. in 18 months. So we're sort of like, you know what? We uh, want to get something to go, uh, celebrate a little bit of what we've done so far. You know, we've started to get our voice heard in Lansing and all that. So we're going to celebrate for a weekend. Right. So. Yeah, and to put it in perspective, for 40 bucks for a weekend, we just booked a campground in Ohio for when we're going down there to do our bow hunt. And it's $44 a night just to camp there. 
Yeah, exactly. And you get, you know, it's going to be all weekend long. The first night is just pretty much hang out, stuff like that. The next night, the next day, we're going to start off the morning. Um, the vans at Buckley's will be uh, running out to the, there's a big hill in Mount Pleasant. We're going to do a hike to hunt up the uh, hill first thing in the morning for anybody that is able to get up and go and do that in the morning. Um, and then uh, from nine, from eight till noon, we're going to have some seminars running. So I'm going to be doing a butchering, uh, how to butcher a deer seminar. Um, I've been butchering deer since my dad was willing to hand me a knife. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. I've never, uh, I've never had a deer butchered by anyone else. I've just always done them. Um, been doing it for a really long time and I'm really big into cooking and stuff like that. So I'm going to do that. Then, uh, Drew Youngdike, who you had on an earlier podcast. Yeah. You can go back to episode. I want to say it's possibly it's like two, three or two. two or three. Yeah, yeah. Straight up there at the beginning. Yeah. And, uh, he's going to do one on still hunting public land in Michigan. So sort of how to go about that. You know, not just the traditional sitting in a tree stand kind of thing mm -hmm. that, you know, going even beyond, you know, further back than that and just walking around in the woods very slowly, all that kind of stuff, how he goes about figuring out where he wants to go, all that kind of stuff. And then uh, Alex Serviniak, who is a member of BHA, but he's also the state, I mean, uh, the chair of the uh, Headwaters chapter of Trout Unlimited. He's doing a... Uh, seminar on it's called uh why you suck at fly fishing so i know why i suck and yeah. that's because i've done it once in my life and i'm horrible <laughs> <laughs> I, I i'm a lowly spinner fisherman as i always say oh, yeah. um and then uh then mark kenyon who's one of our board members will be doing a seminar too that's sort of going to be a uh it's in work in progress as to what exactly that's going to be but everybody knows who mark kenyon is yeah why are you hunt i wanted so. to text him and ask if he had any idea what he was doing but i don't want to bother him i know he's in alaska right yeah, now he's Steven alaska. Rinella, probably <laughs> filming an episode of meat eater if i had to imagine yeah i, I don't think you're getting a hold of him <laughs> yeah they're on a caribou <laughs> hunt out in alaska yeah so yeah but yeah so that'll be the first half of the day and then the second half of the day We'll just have livery games and stuff like that going on. Opportunity to win stuff or bid on things from Bronk Box, Vortex Scopes, uh, all sorts of stuff. J Sporting Goods has donated some stuff for us. Uh, just a ton of individuals, uh, companies have donated stuff for us to auction off and raise some money for the state chapter. And then in the evening, starting at 5, we're going to have a pint night that's open to everybody that wants to come. Um, all proceeds will go to, uh, Michigan BHA. We got a, uh, one day liquor license, so we'll be, uh, selling beer. We'll be doing all that. And then after that, it'll just be, uh, campfires and, uh, more debauchery. <laughs> 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 and then, uh, Sunday morning we have, uh, I'm trying to remember who, uh, there's, uh, we're getting, f you get free coffee and we clean up the place and we, uh, head home. But it's going to be a straight up blast. So. Yeah. yeah, yeah, it sounds awesome. Yeah, where can uh, people find like the write up? I know you had a. Is it right on the BHA? Page? Yeah, it's right on the BHA website, or you can go to our Facebook page. There's the event. You can look at that. So yeah, sorry, I got a mosquito like flying right <laughs> in my eye right now. I thought you were just like <laughs> <laughs> He's saluting you though. Yeah, time. exactly. I was like, That's weird. <laughs> I'm so proud of you, Jason. <laughs> Doing a great job. Let's uh. I want to come back and talk about the details of the event, but I want to talk about BHA. I've been busy. Um, I've had a ton of stuff going on. I've had a lot of emails come through that I negligently have not been able to even <laughs> look. Yeah. Um, what have you been up to? What's BHA been up to? What's going on like on a national level and then I suppose uh, on a smaller level here in our state of Michigan? So national level, the big thing going on right now is the uh – Zinke submitted his review on National Monuments, and there is no Zinke. Say Zinke. He's Secretary of the Interior. Okay, Zinke. He uh, used to be a, I think, senator or state re state rep out of uh, Montana. Trump selected him as the Secretary of Interior, and they Trump made him take a look at all the monuments that have been put forward in the last 26 years or something and there was like 26 of them um 
there hasn't been details released on that <laughs> specific his recommendations, but it sounds like he's trying to they're trying to definitely shrink a ton of the national monuments. And one of the myths around is that, oh, it's a national monument that takes away hunting and all that stuff from that. It's not actually true. Of the 26, something like 23 of them allow hunting on them. And the other three, to get that land, somebody donated to to the government or stuff like that. And specifically in that was there's no hunting or something yeah. like that. So it doesn't really take away anything. It just It's one more layer of protection to keep things like, you know, it's a wilderness kind of zone. Do you really want to be walking along and come across the oil well or something like that? Mm -hmm. So that's what it sort of prevented. So it sounds like they're going to try to shrink some of those. So Are they essentially just trying to cut some overhead and cost and liquidate some assets? Is that it's, They're not trying to sell anything. They're basically trying to make it easier for resource extraction so that you know, deregulate yeah deregulate it so that more people can go in there lumber you know oil coal that kind of stuff right so and in the state it's been pretty slow right now the you know the uh ho the chambers of the house and senate were on summer recess so it's been pretty slow right now there's not a lot going on we got some stuff we're keeping an eye on just to make sure nothing silly happens but it's been pretty slow Gotcha. I see him looking around for a lighter. Toolbox here, middle drawer. <laughs> Down. I <laughs> middle drawer. That a toolbox is the support for a camera. Yeah, don't <laughs> shake our tri don't shake our tripod. Look in the little green tin. Maybe it's the next drawer down. <laughs> what drawer? <laughs> it's the very middle. The other middle. Yeah, there the you middle go. middle? All right. So, yeah, within the state, it's pretty slow right now. We're keeping an eye on some stuff. Um, should be, you know, there's line five that's sort of floating around out there. Nobody <laughs> really knows what's going to happen with it. Um, is anything actively happening with it, or is it just sitting there? It's just sitting there. There's been some stuff. Um, Enbridge just came out and said there was uh, some damage to the pipe where some of the coating has came off. So that they're like, it's no big deal, they say. But, you know, I don't really like the idea of just flat steel sticking out there in the water because there's rust so like some of the enamel came off the outside of it in a couple spots so, so. it's starting to physically deteriorate in front of our <laughs> eyes <laughs> i just talked to an enbridge guy in the up <coughs> a good buddy of ours connected to our property he's been working for enbridge he's like a mastermind guy that thing that you just described is called a holiday he just yeah. uh, el educated me about it he said that the uh, way they test that pipe or whatever the capacity of that pipe it's operating at like 25 percent of its capacity he said it could withstand you know almost a you know a bomb going off right next to it and still not fail yeah it's like impossible to fail it's the way he explained it of course well my whole thing is that's what they said about kalamazoo right Right before oh, yeah. that There's definitely broke. opposing stories on both sides. <laughs> <laughs> I'm I'm neutral body. I'm just saying I yeah. drank beer with this guy around a bonfire. <laughs> and he's like, oh, dude, that thing's never going to blow up. Yeah. And he's just as much outdoors as all of us. Oh, yeah. This sure. guy's legit, man. Yeah. He lives for hunting and water and everything else. The uh, I believe the overall major concern was when they built the line, they gave it a, 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 a lifespan that has uh, overpassed now. Right. By quite a few years, yeah, I think. Yeah, it's like 14, 15. So, so that's the concern. I yeah. He said, if you like propane and gas, leave it alone. <laughs> <laughs> well, they could do... But that's beside all the point. I imagine yeah. the oil companies have uh, enough funds to probably do another line, right? They could yeah, I don't feel bad for the oil companies. I know that. You're <laughs> probably right. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> they could afford another one. Fire it up, man. <laughs> yeah well, i was up north uh just over the summer here for a couple of weeks and i saw a lot of line five uh, yeah. um what do you what do you call them like the campaign signs that people stick in their front yard yeah yeah they were everywhere yeah they were so it's obviously been something people up there are concerned about yeah exactly people are worried about it can't blame them but yeah. other than that in our state things been pretty quiet pretty quiet for the last couple months uh the uh Legislature's coming back into session, though, so who knows? Okay. 
So just keeping an eye on stuff, making sure uh, nothing too crazy goes down. All right. And then getting ready for, uh, you know, the rendezvous. And then after that, it's hunting season. Pretty much uh, trying to get anybody to really do much during right. hunting season uh, for a group like us is pretty uh, difficult. Yeah. So everybody's politicians says, are already plotting and scheming. <laughs> They're like, oh, we we'll know, we need to make right. our move around uh, November 15th. So uh, we'll still keep an eye on that stuff. But as far as like events and stuff, it really slows down right. for, between like yeah. October and December, January. So, and then That's after cool. that starts kicking back up, and then we hit in high gear in the next S- summer. So. so back to the event. This gentleman that owns, do we call it a livery? It's a livery. Livery. Yep, <laughs> it's a livery. Can someone Google livery? Yeah, sure. I want that to be defined to me. Because <laughs> <laughs> I'm always just like, what the hell? I, and I always see it attached to canoe, and so I know I like it. So it's called livery? Yep. I'm going to say that right into Google <laughs> so I don't have to spell it. <laughs> <laughs> livery. This is short for liver, livery stable in North America, which is some place where horses or canoes are kept. Oh. so hmm. Okay. Does he have horses? No. Huh. Just canoes. Just canoes. All right. But yeah, so so uh, I've heard this guy, this gentleman Bob's name before. He, <laughs> I uh, follow him on Facebook. He looks like a bit of a character. Yeah, Bob's a good guy. He owns the. Yep, he owns the livery. Okay. So, yep, it's uh, in the process of becoming the uh, United States first brewery slash livery. Oh really? Yeah. So. Oh, is that how he knew how to go through the process of getting yeah, a liquor exactly. license? So he's getting, yeah. yeah, so he's in the. So he makes beer. Yes, he right now he's home brewer sort of dude, but he's in the process of getting uh, um, his brewery license so he can have like, because what could be better? You go to the canoe livery and canoeing without beer seems silly. Right. <laughs> I don't even know what you're saying to me right now. <laughs> I'm totally so confused. You just go there, you can pick up your growler at the uh, livery. They'll drive you up, and you got your beer and your canoe, and go from there. That's a great idea, yeah, man. It's like genius. Yeah. You know what's smart about that, too? Well, I suppose you still have cups. I'm thinking if you have a growler, you don't have a bunch of cans and yeah, bottles yeah. and if stuff. If you got a around. growler, you got two cups, Max, and a canoe, you know, mm-hmm. usually two people. So yeah, What about exactly. two more for when you flip yeah, halfway? I guess you gotta yeah. Well, it depends. Disaster, on. I suppose the BHA members aren't too many aren't going to be flipping canoes. That's pretty, <laughs> pretty legit. <laughs> pretty legit. Group. Most of us know how to handle ourselves in the out of doors. Right. I'm just yeah. thinking of. 10 years prior to this date <laughs> canoeing experiences that I had. and Get yourself a plastic growler and just go with one of the, you know, <laughs> you each grab a 64-ounce growler and you can just uh, one-hand that. That's sucker. exactly needs what cups. You need. Wrap some foam around it so <laughs> yeah, it stays exactly. cold the whole time and go. Big so. big nipple of sorts on it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Eight-hour canoe ride, growler, you'd be in good shape. Oh, yeah. So. What's Bob's? Uh, I, I'd like to meet him. I'd like to talk to him at some point in time. I've heard he's quite a quite a character. He's, so he's a BHA member yep. and he runs this canoe. Yep, he's uh, one of our board members. Runs the canoe livery. He. Uh, What's his last name? Bush, right? Bush. Yeah, Bob yeah. Bush. He used to. What is it? Uh, Fairmont, or I'm trying to remember the name of the uh, big uh, Boy Scout camp down in Arizona or New Mexico or whatever. It's like Fairmont or something like that. He was a uh, you guys need a beer? For years. No, I'm good right now. I'm good. For a couple of years, he was uh, one of the guides out there. So he uh, did backpacking and all that stuff. Took Boy Scout troops out in the middle of the woods. Camped out with him. Um, did all that stuff. Lived in Montana for a while. Been all over. So Cool. Yeah. He's a good guy. Just an all-around badass dude probably to hang out with. Yeah, he's, he's a blast. So, yeah, there's... there's Nobody meets Bob and is like, I don't like that guy. <laughs> <laughs> this sounds like a great time. So it's a canoeing facility. There's going to be beer there. Um, and there's going to be just a bunch of campsites host or uh, occupied by diehard hunter, angler, and outdoorsman yep. for a weekend <laughs> yeah. that are all pretty much going to be getting after it. Yeah, exactly. It's going to be a, a blast. We may even, uh, we're sort of, Still up in the air. Got to order the things, but we may have a uh, archery uh, dunk tank for prizes. <laughs> <laughs> archery dunk tank. Yeah, you get those. Uh, we're gonna 
probably get some of those big art if you've ever seen they got the archery tag they got the big foam heads yes so yeah we'll get like a 25 or 30 pound uh dual shelf recurve and have archery dunk tank oh yeah that'll be ridiculous (laughs) awesome yeah i'm really looking forward to it man as soon as you posted the original post the facebook post (laughs) saying when it was going to be and everything it's like uh, that weekend's going to be free for me. <laughs> yeah, so. exactly. That's uh, most of the guys that have uh, heard about it are like that. This year it's in September. You know, for BHA folks, probably not the best choice because yeah, of elk hunting and all r- that out west. Right. But we got towards the middle of the summer, we're looking at our membership stuff, what we've accomplished so far, and we're like, we really want to do something. And it was getting mm-hmm. to the point where planning something in August just wasn't going to happen. So we said, we'll just plan it in September next year. We'll roll it up into August and uh, go from there. Yeah. No, it's going to be a lot of fun. Yeah, it's going to be. You guys are going? I'm going You're for going? sure. I'm yeah. up in the air. I committed to saying that I was going, and then I got a group of people to go, and then I realized that um, I had some scheduling complications. So I'm not certain yet. Taking the Airstream? No, he's going to have that, I think. Oh. But I'm going to take a tent for sure. I was picturing when a bag on the back of my mind. <laughs> Gears are turning. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's, uh, it'll be fun. There'll be, uh, you know, with all the livery stuff, the canoes floating all day and all that. Canoes and kayaks, you know. You said. Kids are fine. You know, take some kids along. It's yeah. not a bad idea. Yeah, you said rustic campground, but do they have accommodations yeah. for trailers? They uh, we'll probably get you a uh, extension cord. <laughs> That's <laughs> it. <laughs> That's more than I need. I just need somewhere to park. Yeah, there's room. So. Cool. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I, was, I was trying to sell my wife on it. I don't think she's going <laughs> for it. She my went to that pint night when yeah. we did the one in Kalamazoo, and yeah. she's like, you know, that was fine, but I don't know if I'm going to tolerate camping around all you guys. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, no, that's understandable. <laughs> we... uh it become one-sided conversations or talking about one of two things very quickly. <laughs> yep. <laughs> so you said the memberships grow uh, has grown quite a bit. Do you know uh, roughly like a figure of how many members we have in our state? We're closing in on about four hundred. So we've grown like six hundred percent in the last year and a half, which is you know for a Midwest state we're uh, growing pretty quick. So Good. what's it take to become a member? It takes twenty five dollars. And a want to uh, and a care for public land. That's all yeah. it takes. Yep, twenty five bucks a year. You get a kick ass magazine. You guys get the magazine. Yeah, it's, it's a quarterly magazine. Yeah. correct. Yep, it's, it's quarterly. Very very nice. Yeah, it's one of the few magazines I'll read. Most hunting magazines are like ten ways to do this or ten ways to do that. I right. don't care about their ten ways. Yeah, it's like a <laughs> right? cosmopolitan yeah. of hunting. Yeah, yeah exactly. no, it is. It's like men's health, all yeah, that exactly. deer hunting stuff. I don't care about your ten ways or your seventy five broadheads you shot through par- particle board or something. I don't care. Right. Yeah. So, but yeah, um, get that, and you know, you're on the email and website and all that kind of stuff, so you get notices if anything stupid's going down in the state. So, so you, you can sign it. up on your website yep. or your Facebook yep. page. Like you go saying. to the, you can go to the uh, be it backcountryhunters.org and on there there's a the first page is sign up yeah then. if you google backcountry hunters and anglers i mean you'd have to be pretty bad yeah. at navigating the internet right to not find <laughs> this it. is the first i've heard about it, it i just jumped into fire here it's the <laughs> fastest growing and youngest conservation organization in the country yeah so that's why, awesome that's a good opportunity for scott and for other people that are in his situation i mean uh let's talk about just a little bit of where and how this group uh, began and so, what it's what its overall mission is so it started like i think 12 years ago around a campfire in oregon um basically some folks were sitting around the campfire and like, you know, there's all these conservation organizations for that are species specific, right? There's, you know, uh, wild Turkey foundation, NWF. So net ML, sorry, the national elk foundation, uh, all Rocky, that, your yeah. Rocky mountain elk foundation, RMEF, all these kind of things. QDM, QDMA, all these sorts. Of, so there's all these species specific ones, but there's nobody that's like, the thing that really matters is the land. Right. Because without the land, got nothing. it doesn't matter. Right. You know, so, and so that's what their focus is, public lands, you know, because out west, it's something like 80% of the hunters hunt on public land, same with 
fish if you fish in this country you pretty much are fishing on public water right it's like virtually a guarantee um and then even in Michigan, in you know, you know, you know, there's a huge portion of. You're fine. I don't okay. know what happened. Sorry. There's a huge portion of people that hunt on public land, and every, you know, lots of people will say people are quitting hunting re- for this reason or that reason or all of these things. Every survey that's ever done says the reason people quit hunting is access. If they don't have access to land, they quit hunting. So that's what we focus on. We focus on cons- conservation on public lands and protecting public lands. And there's been a bunch of movements around the country in the last few years to try to sell off our federal public lands. You know. And in a state like Michigan, where we have a uh, sell-off is one option they talk about, or they also talk about transferring public lands to the state, federal lands to the state. Well, the truth is, fa- you know, track records of states is horrible on public land in it on almost completely out west land that the states have they sell because they're required to manage that land at a profit if they can't make a profit off it they have to sell it really? it's in their constitutions okay okay so that's the way that works out west you take a la- la- state like michigan we have a land cap okay so in michigan we have a cap to the amount of land the state can own we're about 20,000 acres under that right now. Okay. In the state of Michigan, we have three, roughly 3.5 million acres of federal public land. If that land was transferred to the state, they would have to sell every inch of it, minus that 20,000 acres, that buffer room, inside six months. Whoa. So. Jeez. So. Semi-critical. Have, yeah. Yeah. So <laughs> wow. you would basically have the amount of public land in the state. If public land, if federal land was transferred to the state. So hmm. you would take all the hunters you have on public land. Now people complain like there's a lot of hunters on the public land. Now shove them in half the space. Right. Oh, yeah. It'd be bad. Yeah. So, you know, that's the kind of stuff we fight against. Yeah. Cool. You know, it's all like it's not just for hunters either. You yeah. Know, there's all the hiking trails, equestrian right. stuff. Horseback riding you and know, all, like, all, all the, the ATV, everything. So, yeah. you mean, you lose a lot of stuff when it goes away. Yeah, the yeah. whole outdoor industry. Yeah, exactly. And it crumbles. So, and you look at like Teddy Roosevelt's on freaking Mount Rushmore. It's not because he was <laughs> selling federal land. It's because he made parks and national forests and all that stuff. And people wanted that. Right. Right. No. Uh, somewhat of a federal level, you know, some people's belief is uh, it's more valuable as a dollar amount to sell it and or be able to take resources off of it. You know, they just look at it, this cash crop just freely sitting there. And a lot of people that mines don't work like mine does see an opportunity there. And so this group has kind of been on the forefront of spreading the message of, what's going on and what people need to be paying attention to. Because let's be honest, guys like you and me and... uh, Hell, me. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) You know, it wasn't that long ago. How how are we supposed to know all this stuff is is going on? I mean, who's bringing it to our attention and who's who's organizing a loud voice? I mean, if you don't have a loud voice, when you come to the table, um, you know, you're not going to be prioritized. I feel uneducated already. <laughs> <laughs> I'm starting to learn that I don't know much, except how to hunt. You know, on That's public important. land. <laughs> That's an important <laughs> item. Right? Yeah. So I can dig that. So it's a good group. We joined uh, this past winter. They had what he was talking about. They had a pint night in Kalamazoo, and there was actually an archery expo over there. So we went over for the day. We went to this archery expo. We signed up as members, and then we went to this pint night, which is basically just a bunna. There wasn't many hikers or canoers there. <laughs> it was hunt hunters and f- fishermen and, and trappers. And, uh, you know, everybody came together and we all had a bunch of beers and it was fun as hell. And just yeah, sounds meet, like meet a ton of like-minded people. And you start to realize real quick, like going forward, how important it is to have this kind of organized group that, you know, when there's something going on in Lansing that doesn't make sense to people that think like me and you that we have a voice there and they have a lot of sharp intelligent people involved at the upper end of this this group yeah and it's you know 
most of us, quite frankly, would prefer to just spend our time in the woods. But somebody's got to be paying attention. And, you know, not everybody wants to be going to Lansing or doing that kind of stuff. They just want to know what's going on so they can call somebody and say, don't do this. Yep. You know, right. That's all they want to <clears> do. <throat> you know, and that's perfectly understandable. So, you know, and the nice thing is it's amazing the network of people when you start like join BH, BHA or all that, the people you meet and the people that want to do stuff and all that kind of stuff is amazing. Yeah. Like, it, it's crazy. Like, you run into people and you're like, it's it's amazing. Right. Well, let's face it. I mean, if we didn't go to that pint night, whatever, six, seven months ago, probably wouldn't be sitting yeah, here exactly. talking to I you for the... Wouldn't know me. Right. Yeah, so... Yep, and then you have that buddy that makes those ridiculous broadheads. Yeah, so, exactly. I mean, he's a BHA guy. I mean, it's yeah, a exactly. good network of people to know. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. So, yeah, Jarrett, he's out of uh, New Mexico. He makes those uh, bone bone broadheads. They're two-blade, single-bevel broadheads. They're, like, super old school, but they're for uh, designed for compounds. So they've been shooting those in trad world for go like ahead, ages. Go ahead. Talk about them. Uh, I want to grab one. Yeah, you can grab one. I'll grab one. I'll put okay. it. I'll put it for anybody so, that's watching the the YouTube feed or wants to go to the YouTube feed. I'm going to put it up in front of the camera right now so you can check these things out because they are they're definitely unlike any broadhead I've ever seen. Yeah, so they're like old school trad style bows. Lots of guys shoot two blade single bevel broadheads. Yep. The whole concept is much like a chisel when it goes into a chunk of wood. As it, if you were to spin it, it just breaks, right? So mm -hmm. it'll do the same thing with bone. Trad guys have been shooting two-blade single bevels for years and years and years. There's right. even, like, a whole book a guy wrote called, uh, it's I can't remember the guy's first name, but it's the Ashby Report. He's, like, this big-time hunter. He's a trad guy. He went over to Africa and wrote up, did, like, autopsies and all this kind of stuff and to figure out what exactly was the best broadhead for penetration, all that kind of stuff. There's like, it's a book on basically why the two blade single bevel broadhead is the best broadhead you can possibly shoot. <laughs> <laughs> you know, granted he's, you know, some people are like, yeah, it's a little kind of whatever, but they really do work. And quite frankly, those broadheads, I've never had a broadhead shoot that good. I yeah. I'm buying some of the, uh, ones you tooth guys use the, the two the arrows yeah. for my daughter's bow. Um, but I've never had bro – I was shooting those. They shoot with my field tips exactly out at 50 yards. I was having no issues at all. And that's with no – you know, I bear shaft tuned my arrows, screwed on my field points, shot them, screwed on my broadheads, shot them. There was no difference. There was no changing anything or anything like that. Right. So Yeah, I've had the same success with the tooth of the arrow yeah. ones. You know, those are all machined out of one piece. Yeah. They're a four-blade. They're yeah, more exactly. traditional – they're a more uh, modern-looking broadhead. Yeah, exactly. But, uh, yeah, those things are wicked looking. <laughs> yeah, and they're, like, super heavy duty. They're, like, I think they're they're over, I mic'd them out. They're, like, 16th inch steel. So it's, like, you're not going to bend a no. blade that's an inch wide that's 16th, you know, 16 gauge steel. It's just not going to happen. Right. So. I feel like a lot of fixed blade broadheads fly better than what people think they do. I think a lot of it, um, certainly there's some that fly better than others, but, uh, bow tuning and arrow tuning I, well, very yeah. many people pay little attention to they just kind of throw some stuff together i've been negligent of it for years and now i mean i i see your setup obviously i know you're paying attention yeah. i've read a lot this year and my setup's completely different and yeah, yeah you say they fly just like your field yeah, points there right? is no difference i was like i was shooting six arrow groups you know in in a softball at 50 yards and three yeah. of them were broadheads and three were field point there was yeah. no way you could walk up to it and even tell that's crazy. If I would have yeah. done that like two years ago with my old arrow set up, I would have yeah. had them all over the target. Yeah. And I think a lot of it is, you know, like you said, you know, inside 50 yards, it probably doesn't really, you know, you get 40 and in, probably doesn't really matter all that much as long as your bow's tuned worth a damn. Right. You know, I, I was, uh, I bear shaft tuned my arrows out to 30 yards. At that point, I could probably shoot anything out to 40 yards and it wouldn't matter. Right. right. But, you know. And, you know, you get a decent FOC on your arrow, and you go from there. I don't think you'd have too many problems shooting just about anything, quite frankly. No. But these things, I'm I'm really excited to shoot these things. You know, old, like, my one buddy, he shoots a recurve, loafing out there at 160 feet per second, and he shot through a deer spine last year. Yeah. You know, shooting a two-blade single-bevel broadhead. It just... 
You know, it's not something any everybody's always been, you know, for past ever. Everybody's always like speed, speed, speed. Need speed, kinetic energy. Well, kinetic energy. I can throw. Do you want me to throw a feather at you at 100 miles an hour, or do you want me to throw a bowling ball at 10? Which would you prefer? Right. <laughs> <laughs> think i'm gonna say please throw the feather at me right i'll take that one <laughs> because it's momentum kills it's not kinetic energy yeah so what uh how did you go about figuring out your foc uh for anybody that's just I here and that I or used, doesn't know i used gold tips uh their like uh, calculator their calculator foc being yeah. uh, it's the fr it's a measurement of how much weight is in positioned in the front of your arrow so it's front of center that's yeah. what foc oh, stands okay. for right on. and so you're how my much? Arrow. What's the front of your arrow weigh? My the front of my arrow weighs two hundred and twenty five grains. So I have a hundred and I have a hundred grain brass insert and a hundred and twenty five grain head. I could have got the two hundreds, but I thought that was like overkill. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't shooting elephants, so right. I figured the uh, five hundred grain arrow at seventeen and a half FOC was plenty. So essentially, a two hundred and twenty five grain broadhead. Yeah. Jeez. That's essentially what it is. So yeah, you're pretty awesome. much set up with your arrows to go shoot a musk ox. Yeah, right? exactly. Like that was one of the reasons I wanted to switch. First, I don't want to have to deal with like not getting pass throughs. It's not going to matter what I hit; it's going through. You know, I'm going to get a hole poked out both sides because a blood trail with just one hole sucks. Right. Yeah, two holes is great. Right. Um, and I don't want to change setups. I want to go out west. I want to do all that kind of stuff. I don't want to have to be like, oh, I got to load up a different arrow. Yeah. Uh, like, I don't have to do that. The only thing I might have to do is load up some different arrows to shoot something smaller. You know, if I want to go antelope hunting and have to shoot out to 70, 80. Right. Yards. Exactly. Mm -hmm. But yeah. for us hunting here in the state of Michigan, yeah, exactly. it makes all the sense in the world. That's I'm shooting at 215 grains. I got 15 grain insert with 100 grain uh gold tip makes these weights you pull the insert out and then they have this essentially this real long allen wrench and you, you pull can the assemble knockout, pull not the, the insert. i'm sorry you pull the knockout and from the back side of the arrow they have these weights that go and thread into the back of the insert 50 grains or 20 grains they have different combinations but they the weights thread to grab together really? and then they fit uh you know the the diameter fits inside the inner diameter of the arrow, so they're not w wiggling around in there or anything. They're threaded right to the back of the insert, so it's essentially just like having all that weight on your broadhead. And so I have 100, 250 grain weights in the front with a 15 grain insert, and then a 100 grain broadhead. So 215 grains on the front of my arrow. <coughs> so if you take, like I shoot a 100 grain uh, hypodermic, yep. you go throwing a 250 grain broadhead on there or whatever all the weights don't you have to just change everything um, to make it shoot right again it actually shoots i've never messed with you this won't stuff get really. is it will sort of fall off a little bit but big things about foc in a heavier area is a heavier thing will maintain velocity longer it's just like momentum right right so like you're saying an object before. in motion wants to stay in motion so a heavier it's like it's the same as a 200 grain bullet and a 165 grain bullet with equivalent at, um, ballistic coefficients, the 200 grain bullet will maintain velocity longer than the 165 right. grain bullet just because of that momentum. So Are you pulling back crazy poundage or no, something I like that? I shoot 70 or? pounds. Really? I, I yeah. shoot 58. Really? 58 pounds. Yeah. So, yeah. and like, it does, I do get a little more drop off than my last arrows out at 50 yards. It's not a lot. But I'm carrying more impact at 50 yards by far than I was before. No kidding. Yeah. It's unnoticeable for Michigan hunting. Yeah. 40 yards, you're not going to notice it. Right. Yeah. Right. Like, no, I, I, get that. I might shoot, I was shooting 420 grain arrows or something. I might shoot, I think I had to move at 30 yards. I think I had to move my pin to adjust for like an inch of drop over my last arrows. It wasn't much at all. And, like, momentum at that distance is so much more. Like, literally at 50 yards. And the other big thing about shooting a heavy arrow is how much it quiets your bow down. Like, my bow sounds... I have a recurve and I have my compound. My compound is pretty much as quiet as my recurve is now. It makes next to no noise. Really? It's like, you heard it. It's, it's yeah, quiet. it's really it's like quiet. 
It's like the, hitting the target is louder than my bow. Really? That's yeah. awesome. It's uh, it's not new information. The traditional no. archery community has always shot real heavy, real heavy setups because um, those bows didn't shoot fast. So right. they needed a heavy hitting arrow to get penetration. And then what ended up happening is bows started getting faster, and then it became this big dick competition about who's got the fastest shooting bow. So then they started lighting, lightning arrows up and doing all different things just to see that chronograph number grow. I forget and what the standard weight of the arrow is that they shoot for oh, uh, it's crazy. FPS. It's like 300 and some grains. Yeah, for IBO, it's like way, 300 Way, way lighter than anything like that, that yeah. you would. It's like I started shooting way back in the day when they like still listed everything in ammo which is essentially like a 500 great arrow like what I'm shooting. Mm-hmm. So, and like I think my I'm my bow right now, I got a 504 grain arrow loping out there at like 244 feet per second or something. And it wow. hits like a ton of bricks. Yeah. <laughs> Knocks the bag over. Yeah, it, it it hits hard, man. A guy that I was just chatting with this week who shoots a recurve bow uh shoots 350 grains on the front of his arrow. Damn. And he said he never does not have pass-throughs. He'll shoot right through the shoulder of a deer with a 50-pound longbow or a recurve. That's awesome. Yeah. So um, one of the things that I had described to me as is if uh, your arrow, your 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 broadhead or your point is what you're shooting and the arrow is steering it. So if you think about like uh, having a rock and tying a piece of string to it and throwing the rock, pulls that arrow straight well if you have a heavier rock and you chuck that thing you know versus uh you know tying it to you know a rock that weighs half its weight it's not going to do as well in the wind and when it gets to its destination it just doesn't have the power yeah. it's right. easier to pull something like pulling wire through a pipe right it's easier to pull the wire through the pipe than to try push to push it, it yep so. <clears throat> yep so we've been playing around with it we've tried some different things and uh Bows are shooting better and hitting harder. He, hell, I got a brand new, uh, it's like a bag target. You know how hard those things are. Yeah. He put a goddamn arrow through one earlier, <laughs> ripped all fletchings right off his arrow. And the thing, the bag's like next to new. Yeah. I couldn't believe it. He Today you did I. that? Yeah. <laughs> should show up I earlier. I got to go refletch my arrow. He's got a brand <laughs> new. Really? He's got Dude, a brand awesome. new. What's the, 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 the target that you have? The, the uh, deer. Delta, I think, makes it. He has it, a brand bug. new Delta, like, 3D deer target, and his arrows go. My arrows went through the Delta buck target, which was about 12 inches off of my fence, and I put a piece of just 5 eighths plywood behind it, mm-hmm. leaning on my fence. Well, I shot through the target, broke through the plywood, and broke through my fence. Yeah. It's like I was shooting my in-laws this weekend had a 3d target and then had a big like foam roll it's basically like one of those block targets right it's basically the same thing in fact i was shooting broadheads into it and it's made the same way and i was shooting i had the two butted right together i was shooting through the 3d target and then like burying it up to the fletches in it even though there was another target it was burying into behind it yeah wow I need to come and shoot with you guys. <laughs> Ever since I, I mean, this is making sense. Now I just got new arrows for my Matthews. I'm shooting like 65 pounds, 100 grain broadheads. And, but the arrows are stiff. They shoot like a piece of straw. Yeah. To where my Martin that I got from you, and you made the arrows, those arrows, like, you could see them bend when you released. But they just ripped, dude. They whacked, you know. These mm-hmm. things just, like, shoot like a piece of straw, and they don't barely even make the target flinch my brother right next to me when he hits the damn target almost tips right over yeah it's like i lost all the energy with the different arrows with the matthews the arrows before that it was shooting do you know what 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 spine they are or what arrows they are it's like a 65 to 70 Mm -hmm. and i'm all i'm at like 64 65 pounds so i'm on the lighter end of yeah it it might be a 350 or a 300 spine and who makes the arrow Man. Well, we can get into this later. Yeah. But yeah. We'll I don't know. know. I've done a lot more research Should on arrows in the last year. So yeah. No, it's good to talk about right now because archery season's coming up. and it's yeah. uh, I will say with uh, 
just a little disclaimer, I don't suggest everybody go and change their whole setup no. three weeks before <laughs> season. Yeah, exactly. Starts, yeah. You know? I've so. been thinking about it and working on right. it for a long yeah, time. Yeah, this I've is been stuff running that. the numbers for <laughs> yeah. like six months before yeah, exactly. I finally built I the like, arrows. So. I, I was like, this is what I want. And like going through all the different arrows. Like I'm shooting speed arrows that are like, su- they're like eight and a half G- grains per inch right. or something. But then I shoved like a ton of weight up front because i wanted to be like i was looking at a speed i wanted to hit roughly and a weight i wanted to hit and i Mm -hmm. had to like screw around with what i could get that out of because i looked at heavier arrows but then my foc was going to be like not very good right so it was just screwing around with all that stuff if there's anybody out there that has any questions like about a specific arrow like what you're shooting and like recommendations or whatnot feel free to message uh the Facebook page, the Deer Hunter Podcast page, and either Kevin or I will yeah. get around to it and uh, we can point you try to hook you up, or yeah, at yeah, least w- give you the tools we, to do it yeah, yourself. Exactly. We can point you in the direction of people that know way more about it than we do. Because right. let's be honest, we're just getting yeah. into this. We, yeah, exactly. We're learning it from people that have known it for a long time. Right. So we're not sitting here telling you, "Hey, we know all this." We're I w- just. I will say there is a episode of. It's the Gertie Bowman podcast. If Couple you look it up, yeah, is that a, the one where they were talking to the Valkyrie guy? They've had know. quite a few different episodes with quite a few people that know a lot about oh, arrows. Yeah. But it's like two hours about building arrows. Yeah, there's and like the Tim Gillingham a YouTube, one, a YouTube uh, yep. thing about it. And on the Gritty Bowman site, they actually have a search engine on their yeah. site because they have so much content yeah if you go on their site and you type in like arrow building the four or five episodes that they've done on arrow building will pop right up and you can watch them mm-hmm. on youtube yeah those are uh, really good I no that's a lot of it i you know i've been hanging out a lot more with trad guys and then right. western guys and that's why i started getting into like because the yeah. truth is in michigan you can probably get away with a lighter arrow and all oh, that yeah. kind of stuff and a lot of deer have been shot going with you know that super fast ibo bow and right. all that kind of stuff mm-hmm. but you know the truth is people hit shoulders it happens i mean the juries managed to kill yeah. deers with rage broadheads which is impressive in itself <laughs> so <I'm laughs> i've killed a lot of deer with those rage hypodermics <laughs> yeah so they that's what i shoot good i killed deer with rage three blades and people hate those things all right yeah so you know at that level too uh and not to say that those guys are doing this but there's definitely guys at that level that sponsor products that don't actually use them right so Take all that shit with a grain of salt. I'll, I'll say this. I watch a lot of content online with a lot of guys that shoot, you know, broadheads and all that kind of stuff. They got sponsors for certain people. There's a lot of shots I see where it looks like the arrow barely goes in. Right. You watch it and it's like, wow, that dude got like six inches in penetration. And it's like, it's like I love my giant mechanical broadhead. <laughs> I'm like, you might want to tone down on the size of that thing because you're not getting any penetration. Right. All right. So. I always found it fascinating. Yeah, I watched Mark Drury shoot like right through the shoulder of some giant mature buck with a Rage 2.3 inch cut. And I'm like, man, the deer that I shot in a bone with a Rage broadhead did not have that. I didn't have that result. Yeah, and then he manages to hold up the arrow with both blades still on the broadhead. <laughs> it's like, I don't know about that. Yeah. <laughs> those do bl- those blades on those things do bend. I've killed deer with them. They were, yeah. I, I think the hypodermics shoot awesome. Yeah. Like, as far as shooting, and they got a different tip on them, so they're a little more durable, but the blades on all those mechanicals, they all bend. Right. Or break. Mm-hmm. Like, I, I, that's one thing I don't think I have to worry about with these broadheads, is uh, them breaking. Right. <laughs> so yeah, there's Pretty no sure doubt. my arrow is going to break before that broadhead breaks. So. <laughs> yeah, that's how I feel about the tooth of the arrows, mm-hmm. too. I mean, I just like the one piece, limited yeah. failure. They're made great, too. Like, just looking at them, like machining and all that they look yeah. awesome yeah i've been really impressed with them they're one of the big reasons that i got i wanted to go back to shooting fixed blade broadhead and i n- could never be consistent like i could with field tips and i just always had poor flight characteristics one way or another but i always felt more confident that when i hit a deer with a fixed blade broadhead i like i knew what the deal was going to be you know but I was always concerned, is it going to get to the right place? And uh, I heard a guy on a podcast about a year ago. It was on Mark Kenyon's podcast, and mm-hmm. I, I have no idea what episode it was, and I can't remember the guy's name, but he was uh, a professional blood tracker. 
and he trained blood tracking dogs. And this guy had been on tens of thousands of blood trails. And at the end of the podcast, they asked the guy, if you have one recommendation for like the modern day archer that uh, is, is bow hunting and has to blood track a deer or one recommendation that you could say, what would it be? And he says, don't shoot mechanical broadheads. Really? Yeah. And I was like, well, that's a strong statement. Yeah. No and he's doubt. like, just the percentage of deer blood trails that I've been on for mechanical broadheads versus fixed blade broadheads is staggering. And I thought, well, that's a strong statement. This guy's like, he's probably in, you know, 80. He's like a seasoned, seasoned dude. And uh, to me, I was just like, huh, all right, well, might be something there. I think a lot of it has to do with, you see a lot of guys shooting mechanicals. (laughs) And uh, I could probably catch some hate for this, but (laughs) out of setups, they have no business shooting mechanicals out of. You know, and people will say, oh, Mark Drury shoots like eight, like 50 pounds and shoots rage i don't think that's a good idea you're just not carrying the like right you're not carrying the mass and momentum there to push that push that through right is why i'll tell you right now go on youtube and look at anybody that is sponsored by a mechanical broadhead and watch a bunch of the shots on their shows and you'll be amazed at the utter lack of pass-throughs you know, you'll see some places where they're they're getting pass throughs, but it's almost always like they never go through. Right. Mm-hmm. That huge yeah. cut means nothing to me. Yeah. I need a pass through because you've been on a blood trail that just sucks. Yeah. When you don't get a pass through and you're hunting out of a tree stand and that entry hole is high. Hi. It, it man, the, that is you're gonna have the a whole bad, cavity fills up with blood. You're gonna have a bad time ahead of yep. you. Get Unless a pass you know how through. to just track an animal. Without right. blood, you're going to have a hell of a time. Yeah. So that that's a critical thing for me. So I went to a smaller diameter fixed blade that has better flight characteristic and uh, it seems seems to be a real good product that we found is this Tooth of the Arrow broadhead this year. That's a single piece machine steel, no no blades or nothing. It's just one piece four blade broadhead. I'll show it to you when we're done. I'm in the market for some broadheads i killed dirt with all my hypodermics last year <laughs> well we got a <laughs> I missed we got a <laughs> we got a 10 percent discount code that's deer hunter 17 uh on their website if you go to tooth of the arrow website and you load your cart up and you put in promo code deer hunter 17 it'll discount your whole cart 10 percent really yep and then uh, the things sent show it right up to your door i'll show them to you yeah we, i'll get with you later because I, I need some broadheads still doing it but they had uh i ordered my i ordered six of this them the free shipping because i got my cart all i got to do is check out because yeah. i'm gonna buy some for my uh daughter to shoot so. so it was like 60 it was like 67 bucks and some change for six razor sharp broadheads really? delivered to the yeah. house so yeah that's cheaper than hyperdermics Oh, yeah. It's yeah. cheaper than That's a awesome. lot of options. Yeah, exactly. And they're all American made. It's just a, a machining company up in Minnesota. Yeah, family business. Yeah, and it's a four blade fix. I'm yep. picturing a muzzy in my head. Uh, Jason, would you grab one out of my quiver right it's there? A, You're gonna. A, oh, he's got it. <laughs> <laughs> These are the uh, practice. Oh ones. wow, that's the practice tip. So those don't have sharp edges on them. Yeah, you showed me this a couple weeks when I was over. I probably did. I probably forgot I did. That's legit, man. Yeah. See it. Sure. Wave that. You got to get right up in front of that camera for anybody. Mm. Remember I shot that 10 point in 2012 right before I went on Hurricane Sandy. And I, I went to your guys' camp. Me and Drassa tracked that thing for eight hours. Then we come to the, the Buckhorn party with you guys that night. Then I tracked it all day the next day. That was the last year I shot with Muzzies. And then I went to the hypodermic. That's yeah. why I switched to the hypodermic. Right. Because everybody... Five years ago, thought that was, or right. was saying that that was the mm-hmm. answer. Right. Yeah. But now I lost a damn deer with the hypodermic. <laughs> <laughs> and right. then I've killed a bunch of dirt, so I'm going to stick to rifles or get something different. Right now, <laughs> I, and we will we'll have a good conclusion after the end of the season because uh, pretty much unanimously all the guys that I'm hunting with are kind of experimenting with this new arrow build with the heavy front of center weight and a good fixed blade broadhead and having our bows 
tuned with our broadheads and shooting our broadheads and uh we've been shooting these things and at 60 yards they're field point accurate for for us right now that's awesome so that looks like it'll open up a hole too yeah i mean it's a little bit bigger than the 250 grains you know sabot out of my 12 gauge shotgun <laughs> so yeah it's a one inch diameter hole yeah. Right, and so like people see that big cut cutting diameter on broadhead packages where it's like two and three quarter inch. Yeah, well, that's a surgical slit down yeah. something where this right. is punching a the one. The biggest inch thing hole. too, like yeah. even More say you don't get a pass through, like with a mechanical, you don't get a pass through. That it, those blades essentially fold up inside there, and right. it's just an arrow flopping around in there. And what a fixed blade doesn't get a pass through. It's in there flopping all around while doing damage. Is just doing damage. Yeah. You, know, you don't well, get that with mechanics. You're just inches away from excellent and very poor results, I think, with a uh, with a mechanical broadhead because it's the difference between going in between a rib or hitting a rib. If you hit a rib and you don't pinwheel it in the center and you hit it just off to the side and it only kicks one blade open and then that arrow cut i i shot a deer with a mechanical broadhead and, and i swear to god inside the deer it like took a 90 degree angle really and came out the front of the deer and i'm like how <laughs> how did this happen yeah. and all i can figure is one blade opened and hit a rib and the thing just 90 degree hooked on a dime and like i i don't have a problem mechan with mechanicals i shot them i you know they work Right. If you put a hole, the truth is, you put a hole in the right spot, it doesn't matter. Yeah, right. it's right. 95 percent shot. And there's some yeah. damn good mechanical yeah. broadheads yeah. out there. Like that G5 Havoc, I shot that last year, the last couple of years. That thing flies amazing and it is extremely heavy duty. Yeah, and like My people give lost rages at them. Really? Mm -hmm. pe last people year. give rages a ton of hell, but you know, most of the hell I think people give broadheads, they're like, oh, the broadhead didn't work. It's because you didn't put it in the right spot. <laughs> Right. <laughs> it's like shot in the ass. Yeah. <laughs> you <laughs> couldn't have shot it with anything. It, it wouldn't have mattered. Right. You know? And they'll say, no, I put it right. You know, A whole lot of people black out when they pull that, you know, they yeah. touch that arrow off. Oh, yeah. It's like, I, it was a good shot. Like, Do you remember where it hit? No. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> we all hear the sound. Just uh, Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, no, it was perfect. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but, like, a lot of it is, you know. I shot mechanicals, never really had too much of a problem with them. Yeah. Um, but I'm also shooting 70 pounds, and I was shooting relatively quick. You yeah. Know? You know, you're shooting a 50-pound bow, and, like, you know, not ever, it's amazing. I, I've shot 70 pounds for ages. I thought everybody did. And then I talked to people, and they're like, yeah, I shoot, like, 50, 55, 60. <laughs> but, like, you start getting down in poundage, you're just not carrying enough kinetic yeah. energy you know momentum yeah, that was the conclusion for me is uh in my head it takes a lot of energy to open that blade up mm -hmm. and that is energy that you are taking away from the ability of that arrow to go through that that deer or whatever you're shooting and to me that's the ultimate goal yeah exactly you want it to go all the way through right and i thought the same thing the only time i you know i'll still sh probably shoot mechanicals if i go out west to shoot antelope or something because they're yeah, small-bodied yeah. animal. I want something that can travel all really long, you know, and 80 like yards. And 40 charts. yards is a close, yeah, close shot. 40 yards antelope. is a really close antelope shot. Right. You know, you're looking at, you know, 70, 80-yard shots. Mm -hmm. You know, I want something that's, you know. And in an antelope, you cut a two-inch hole in an antelope. They're small animals to begin with. You cut a two-inch hole in an antelope, it's going to die. It doesn't really matter where you hit it. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. know. As long as it's not in a leg. Right. Well, it's, I'm going to title this episode BHA event slash broadhead <laughs> fixed blade right. broadhead <laughs> debate because we quickly transitioned into, but it's good. The it, season's about to open up and yeah. people are talking about these things and I, I like hearing other people's opinions too. Look, we've all shot them. We've all shot a bunch of different stuff. I got a yeah. line of broadheads <laughs> up over there that's 20. <laughs> 20 yeah. different ones, you know, well, I've tried them all. Plain old plastic case yeah, exactly. full, of different, full of different broadheads. broadheads. Right. You know. So got this kind and that kind. For this year cousin. right now, the tooth of the arrow is that what I'm going to shoot, and I hope to continue. And uh, and I'll say I'm shooting that with my uh, with my diamond, uh, my faster bow, my my slower, my two slower bows, my long bow, and then my old uh, my old compound. I'll I'll shoot a bigger cut 
single or what double blade i guess they call Two it blade single bevel yep. something like that yep simmons 175 grain tiger shark broadhead but i like the uh short profile and the small diameter of that for the uh higher speed bow <laughs> I think it has the less ability to be affected by wind yeah. or, you know, flight characteristics and things like that. So we'll see. The season might wrap up, and I might be telling people I don't like that one anymore. <laughs> I don't like that I'm one cool anymore. You know, I'm pretty happy with it. So obviously I haven't shot an animal with it, but just from the practicing with it in the backyard, it's pretty impressive. Yeah. They're heavy-duty made. Yeah. yeah, like machine one piece like that. Yeah, that's cool. It's You're, you don't unique. have to worry about blade because I, you know, old school fixed blades, but like they're replaceable blades and stuff yeah, like, like that. The had those broke. Yeah, that. Thunder, had those break before. You know, all that kind of stuff. Yeah. You know, it's, you know, one of the big things I liked about the single bevel ones is there wasn't any uh, like machining holes in them. Right? Yeah. So there's no because. You know, you're not shooting super fast, so it's probably not a huge deal, but that does make noise. It and does. The, yeah. You can hear them. You, know, you can hear them. Like, my arrows, like, that was one other thing. It's like, my arrows sound like nothing going through the air. I got little tiny profile for Fletch. It's like, I didn't want to have to deal with wind or anything like that. But, like, out of my kid's bow, I'm going to shoot these two the arrow. Mm -hmm. have her shoot the two the arrow ones. Because I just think four blades, I think that's perfect. Yep. I talked to Luke, the owner, today, and uh, we'll get into more detail on one of our next episodes where, when we figure out how we're actually going to do it, but he's sending us some to do a giveaway All right, cool. yeah, for listeners. So, And then anybody that wants to can use that promo code DEERHUNTER17. That's a 10% discount on what's already a pretty fairly priced product, and they're, they do, they, uh, they will as of right now, uh, I did a podcast with the guy that owns the company. Really? Yeah, you can go back and listen to it, and he tells you the whole history of the company and, you know, basically their mission and wh why they think that that's the best design and why they made it like that. But, uh, gosh, I lost my, what was I saying about the damn thing? <laughs> <laughs> the guys, but the guy is going to send us a pack to, to run a giveaway, and it's, uh, I don't know. It's it's different. It's a lot different than any other broadhead that I've ever shot or seen. Where's that so. uh, guy out of? They're out of Minnesota. Oh. Yep. So. Where'd you do a podcast with him? You come all the way uh, out here? Nope. Well, we did it over the phone. I sat out in the driveway in the Airstream, actually, on a Saturday morning. We nice. just chatted on the phone for an hour, and he gave me the whole breakdown on the, the whole awesome. thing. That's awesome. So. Yep. But, uh. Yeah, I will say, too, just to clarify, because I listen to a lot of podcasts, and you hear people repping stuff, and you're like, oh, well, those guys are getting paid. <laughs> we are unpaid <laughs> representing yes. this broadhead. We are exactly. highly unpaid representing I'm pretty sure <laughs> nobody here is getting paid by anybody right. to actually do this. So, so. just to clarify that. Yeah. And I'll, I'll say this, too. Anybody that's listening to this that wants to contradict anything that we say or has more information than we do on these things, please reach out to us uh put your two cents in uh correct us if we say something that you feel is not correct we're uh yeah it's not a safe space here we're, we're open durable. for criticism we're durable exactly <laughs> you can yell at me i don't care i've yeah. yelled at before yeah uh, <laughs> and we talked about broadhead so that that could elicit fist oh, fights yeah. so <laughs> <laughs> let's wrap up uh with uh just go ahead and tell people where they can go to to get all the details on the rendezvous coming up and then if they want to become a BHA member. So for both of them, go to backcountryhunters.org. So to become a member, the first thing, the first page that will pop up is the sign-up page. If you scroll down a little bit, there's the uh, tab that will go to all the different uh, things in the website. You can go to events, and we're like the uh, September 22nd, 23rd, 24th. Michigan rendezvous highly recommend everybody show up it's going to be a blast um, there'll be a fair amount of adult beverages um, some yeah. really cool seminars um, one thing you know a lot of people have wanted to know about things like butchering and stuff like that Mark's going to be there Mark Kenyon he'll be doing his and you know Mark's our uh, famous person in our board, so he that is. should be fun. Yep. <laughs> so, um, really great guy, though. He's awesome. Um, but, yeah, it's going to be a blast. Uh, 
highly recommend everybody shows up. And you don't have to be a member to come to no, the rendezvous, right? So if you're not a member, you're on the fence. Yeah. Spend the 40 you, bucks. You come will to the definitely be a member after the <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're not getting out of it. <laughs> Where do I sign up? <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. So. so. Sweet. Yeah. All right. Hope everybody wants to come out, and we will enjoy it. So Very cool. Um, I just want to say one last thing. Uh, anybody following the show or listening to the show, um, thanks a lot. Thanks for all the interaction on the social media platforms lately. We've been getting lots of responses on Facebook and Instagram, and I just wanted to let people know that coming into the deer hunting season, if you get a nice deer or anything that you want to share with us, photos, comments, uh, reach out to us on any of our platforms. We're at Deer Hunter underscore podcast on Instagram and deerhunterpodcast.com obviously and then our facebook page is deer hunter podcast i think we're all in here are yeah are, yep. are on there yep. and then uh deer hunter podcast at outlook.com if you feel it necessary to email us and criticize us about <laughs> any of the <laughs> ramblings that we have with broadheads or broadhead talk. arrows or uh if you don't gr- agree with any of our political yeah. views I'll on public land, feel exactly. free to email us. <laughs> <laughs> I will copiously disagree with anyone that <laughs> disagrees with me. I'll forward, <laughs> it, to, I'll forward it to Jason yeah. Mikoff. But uh, I'll send you a picture of the first squirrel I shoot in the year with my bow. Hey, so. that's coming up right around the corner. Yeah. We're just days uh, away from small game season exactly. here in Michigan. That's exciting. So. Take, out the, uh, take out the recurve. Yeah, some small game. Got some new flu flus. Yeah, thanks to a, a BHA member. Yeah. He listened to the podcast and he he packaged these up. And uh, those are sweet. Sent sent me a bunch of arrows. So yeah, I think I know cool, who you were cool uh, deal. talking yeah, about. Yeah, is there, it so. Steven? Yeah, it's uh, Steven. What's his last name? Oh, Doherty. Doherty. Yeah, I he's didn't want to butcher. He's a hell of a good guy. It. Yeah, yeah. Oh. He was. He listens to the podcast and he contacted me on Facebook. He's like, "Hey, I heard you saying you needed some arrows for your longbow. I just happened to have." Two dozen arrows sitting around here that would work out for you. Wow. Boxed them up and shipped them to me. Honor system. I mailed them a check. That's awesome. It's hard to beat BHA, folks. Just saying. Pretty (laughs) sweet deal. So, um, And then last thing, too, anybody that's been listening to the show and likes the show, huge favor if you go to iTunes and leave us a ranking and review. People have been doing it, and it's it's bumping us up the rankings on iTunes so that when people go into iTunes and search hunting podcast, ours isn't uh, number 527 yeah. right now in the deer hunting thing. It's sitting at, like, number four. Really? Yep. really? That's, That's awesome. impressive. And I want it to be sitting, and I think it can be by the end of the season, if people actually are willing to go to that and – Man, I'd be so thankful if people follow through and do that. And for anybody that has, thank you so much. But I think we can be sitting at number two behind Wire to Hunt here uh, by the end of the season. Then we only need like seven more hundred reviews and rankings <laughs> to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to, to catch up to Mark Kenyon. More downloads, probably. <laughs> yeah, probably, probably a couple million. Yeah, exactly. Catch but, up to him. But cool. All right. Thanks for coming over, dude. And uh, looking forward to the event. Yeah. Thanks for listening. Great.